Hello everyone. Uh, just a reminder, if you are interested in coaching, my email address is up there and in the description. And it's ma I made it really easy. It's something I think everyone should give a try uh, at least once. It, it does have a profound impact on your life, uh, even if you think you don't need it. Uh, the consultation is free and the first session is only $5. So there's really nothing to lose uh, by giving coaching a try and just to see if it does make a big impact in your life. All right. Um, so today I was at the supermarket and I'm standing, I'm looking at all the lines and all the lines, they were, they were quite long. And there was one line where I just saw there was, there was a few people like, you know, three or four people ahead of me, but they all had one item, two items. Some of them had five items. I said, okay, I'm going to wait in this line and it will, it'll go pretty quickly. And so I'm waiting in the line and there's a, a lady standing in front of me. Um, she had just one item. And then all of a sudden, um, it was her turn to go to the cashier. All of a sudden, she tells her friend who has a cartload. I mean, just this few, the car, this cart was spilling out. There was so much stuff uh, in front. Uh, the, she told her friend to come in in front of me and the other people that, that had been waiting uh, in line. And so she was going to cut in front. And so then it got, it, got, it got into this whole situation. Well, what do I do? Do I say something? Because I never would have s stood in that line because there were other lines that, that were shorter um, had I seen a lady with a full cart uh, of stuff. Or do I just go and be passive and let it go and, and not say anything? So I decided, you know what? I'm going to push myself out of my comfort zone and, and take a stand. And so I said, no, I'm sorry, no, -uh, that is not happening in a very firm but calm voice. I said, there's no way. We all have been waiting here. We would not have gotten this line had we seen you uh, standing here with a, the bun uh, a cartload of stuff that's going to take quite some time to check out. And it got a little bit tense. And I blocked, I actually physically blocked the pathway so the lady couldn't cut, you know, just cut right in front of me. And so then, you know, words were exchanged, but all the time I'm just calm and confident. I say, no, this is not right. And then the people behind me said, yeah, this isn't right. You know, we, we've been waiting here. We wouldn't have gotten this line either had we seen uh, this person with, with, with the cart. Now, I understand um, people might say, oh, what's the big deal? Just let it go. Why, cre why create a scene? Why create stress? And this is how we've been conditioned. We've been conditioned to be passive. And you just look at, look at our lives growing up in school. Um, you know, parents, don't, parents telling us, don't say that. You might offend someone. Um, be careful what you say. In school, we, never, we always want to get the right clothes. We want to fit in you know, because we're teased. And when we see... Uh, things that are not right, we take generally, it's human nature to take the path of uh, least resistance because that's what's easiest and it, it um, stops that fear response that we'll have within us. So that fear response will just say, no, don't do that. It's too much of a risk. And then we just become passive. And that's why things tend to get out of control. Um, government tends to get out of control. Um, the, the big corporations tend to get out of control is because we're, we're passive. We're passive and we just accept what people tell us to do. And it's on such a subconscious level, but it's such a great way to create a, a sheep-like mentality and get people to obey you. You know, slavery, you don't need to make them slaves. Uh, when people are passive, they're very easy to manipulate and control for your own benefit. And so, this, we're returning back to the scenario. So the lady is trying, now she sees she can't get through me to cut in front of me uh, to put her cart, <clears throat> her basket full of stuff. It was a cart full of stuff, actually. And so then she says to get the supervisor. And so the supervisor comes and the supervisor did something very smart. She said, okay. Uh, she took the lady, said, come with me. I'll check you out at a at a... I'll open up a register and I'll check you out there and you won't have to wait. And so kind of everything worked out. But the thing that was so exhilarating is to take a stand and to not let 
fear of the situation. Oh, what are other people going to think if I t if I take a stand? How are they going to judge me? And in in fact, it was quite the contrary. I, they were very supportive. But I'm just how many times in our lives do we allow fear to kind of suffocate us and make us smaller? And that risk or that that need to stay comfortable, that need to not have people judge us, to not have people think we're, we're dumb or that uh, for us not to be embarrassed or for us not to look like a fool or for us not to get rejected or look like a failure, that need is a prison. And it might seem comfortable in the short run, but in the long run, it suffocates us and it slowly kills our spirit. Now, you, yes, you, you do have to be um, wise on when to take a stand and when not to take a stand. Um, you know, assessing the situation, obviously you don't want to put yourself in danger or anything like that. But it, it felt kind of, it felt liberating after that experience to let the, the wildness or the, the, um, the assertiveness, the authenticity of what I was feeling in that moment and what I was experiencing and what my intuition was telling me um, at that moment to obey it instead of cowering and letting fear dictate my actions. And when that whole that whole situation happened, it's it came from a different place, whereas normally the, the mind will want to plan everything out. Okay, what am I ex exactly going to say? you know, in this social situation or to take a stand for myself. How should I do it so it all works out and I don't look so bad and I don't look like I'm being a jerk or anything like that. And it was nothing like that. It was something like tapping that a deeper place, that intuitive place, that, that, um, that wiser place of my being and allowing myself to act from that place. And it's so, it was so liberating to be able to do that because we ex exercise so much control of over ourselves. We're always kind of monitoring ourselves. We're always saying things on our mind. And if we do say something, we're gauging other people's reactions to know if we should back off. Or, and sometimes that is helpful. But generally, we decide who we are based on external circumstances based on approval or disapproval. And that just just really kills the spirit. And another thing is it's really um, it's really liberating to come from a place of confidence, to come from a place, you know, doesn't matter. I know this is what is right. And this market incident is supermarket incident is just a small, you know, a small example. I mean, there's much bigger situations, more important situation than this. But when we take a stand, how do we take a stand? Do we do it confidently? Or do we do it meekly? Uh, another, I was reading this book called The, the Gift of Fear. It's a real famous book. And he talks about in the opening um, chapter about um, the situation where the woman was going into her apartment complex. She had all these bags and groceries. That's a common theme for this video. And she's walking up the stairs and uh, one of the bags ripped and some of the groceries you know, fell to the ground. And so then this stranger she didn't know, had never seen, came up to this man, came up to her and said, hey, let me help you with the, the bags. I can, you know, I can carry that for, for you. And she's like really hesitant because she doesn't know this guy. And he kind of pushed. And even though her intuition was telling her, no, you know, I can do this myself, sir. Please, thank you for your help. But um, I'll take care of this on my own. Instead of her taking that, that firm stance, she didn't want to look like she was rude. She didn't want to, you know, what that person would think about her if she was that firm and confident. So she said, oh, like even though she had that, that doubt, she said, okay, and let the man, you know, help her carry her bags to her apartment. And so then she gets the apartment, her apartment door, and the man says, she says, okay, thank you. I've got it from here. But already the man can sense her weakness by allowing her, her, him to carry the bags up, uh, up, the, up the stairs to her apartment, even though 
she intuitively know that knows or knew that she shouldn't have done that. And so then she gets to the in front of the door and the man says, oh, you know, I've, I've taken your bags, you know, this far. I'm not going to see you. I don't want to see you struggle. I'm not going to do the job incomplete. And I, I really, uh, I want to help you bring the bags inside your apartment. And she knew that this is not a good situation, that she does not want to let the, this person in her apartment. So uh, she offered like some resistance, but he persisted. And because he sensed her weakness, he was allowed, she allowed him to go inside the apartment. And um, what uh, uh, this, I was reading an article about Ted Bundy, uh, the serial killer. And he says, he said that he can all, he could spot someone who was going to be a good victim based just by the way they walked. Um, I think it was in The Wisdom of Psychopaths, uh, the book that I read that in. And just by the way that someone walked, he can uh, sense a victim. And so this, this guy can sense weakness and that this woman is afraid to take a stand and be confident and assertive. So she lets him in the house and he ends up uh, raping her, uh, unfortunately. And then um, he says, don't worry, I'm not going to hurt you as he leaves after he, after he had raped her. And he closed the window and he went into the kitchen and she could got this strong intuition, this, this fear reaction intuition that she needs to get out of the apartment. This guy is going to kill her. And it turns out he was going to kill her. He was in the, the kitchen looking for a, a knife and she's connected all. He's shutting the window because he, he doesn't want anyone else to hear my screams. And so it's just it's just amazing. They even it's amazing how our submiss, submiss, submissiveness and our weakness, um, and that and that fear of what other people are going to think, can dominate our lives. And yes, those are you know that's an ex extreme example. But in social situations, we tend to take the path of least resistance, and we tend to not assert ourselves. And so what ends up happening, we become you know, a passive aggressive. And if somebody does something that, uh, we, that, that bothers us and we don't like, instead of confronting them in, in a kind and confident and calm way, telling them about it, we'll just either avoid the situations, won't return their calls. And actually that person deserves to know, you know, what it is, what they did wrong and how the quality of that relationship can be improved. And when we're so afraid of confrontation and so afraid of being confident, calm, and assertive, it really has, in the short run, it's, it, is, it is easier. But in the long run, it takes a huge toll. It really does takes a huge toll on who we are as human, human beings. And it creates that social anxiety because you can't be who you truly are because you're always so concerned about what other people will think. And if you're so concerned about what other people think, they become your master. And for, if, taking it even a step further, how many people do we miss out on connecting with just because we're not being authentic, because we're being timid, because we're being fe uh, fearful? And in, the, in that situation, my norm, this situation at the supermarket today, my normal response would have been, oh, it doesn't matter. You know, just go with the flow, let things go. Why make a stink? Why? And it just, something just kind of clicked in that situation where I, it ended up blocking this lady physically with my body from cut, cutting in front of me. And it's really not about that situation. It's about me strengthening that muscle to be, to be direct, to be honest, and to take a stand and to be confident and calm and assertive. It's strengthening that muscle and that situation helped me to exercise the muscle and allowed me to realize, you know, nothing bad happened. You know, actually ended up working out, working out for uh, everybody and it was... Our mind always creates the worst case scenario uh, in, in these situations. And then fear becomes our master. We just, okay, I, I fear the situation, so I'm, I'm going to avoid it. And so I, I encourage you 
to challenge yourself to expand your comfort zone socially. And it doesn't mean you have to, you know, take these radical steps, but little little baby steps of normally when you might have bitten your tongue and not saying any, said anything, to speak your mind and to be uh, assertive, but kind and gentle. And you'll see that, whoa, that wasn't so bad. And then you could do it again. Oh, that's not so bad. I'm okay. Nothing, you know, it's just all in our mind. It's all the stories that we tell ourselves. And as you continually do it, then you could expand it and start, you know, creating boundaries. If people people love, especially family and, and oftentimes friends and in work situations, we know we because of fear, we don't set up boundaries and people will cross those boundaries. And then we end up not liking our job. We end up avoiding family members. We end up avoiding or having resentment towards people. And all we have to do is just speak our mind. And that taps your authenticity in. It is such one of the reasons we feel so anxious, nervous, and stressful and, and insecure is because we're wearing masks. We're not living authentic lives. And when you live authentic life and your, your self-confidence or your self-worth is not is, in, is independent what other people think about you, that is freedom. And that's what we all seek. Thanks for listening. Um, Got to go get the phone. And again, if you want to um, get some coaching and we can talk about these issues, coaching. Hold on. Let me just allow that to pass. Give me one second. Thanks for your patience. So, so with coaching, um, we work. We take a, a holistic approach to your life, and we work with uh, things like you know getting your energy level up. We can work on finances. Uh, we can work on social situations, uh, building confidence. You know, social anxiety, uh, all all types of things like that. You know, setting up goals and giving your life uh, direction and purpose and focus. And, you know, a lot of people think, oh, I am focused. I don't need coaching. And you'd be surprised what a difference uh, it, it makes. Thanks for, really, thanks for watching. Thanks for all your comments and support. And um, through coaching, it's been really great uh, to be able to connect with, with a, a lot of, uh, a lot of the, uh, my subscribers. And um, just over the years, I, I just, I, I really appreciate, I really appreciate everyone. Okay. Until next time. Bye-bye.